Welcome back to Area DMG. I'm your host, Sopwasi, the Mile High Mouth. And for today's episode of Suki Nihon, for Area DMG, we are looking at episodes 19 and 20, combined into a 22 minute long special of Steven Universe. This episode is called Bismuth, which is a type of, it's not actually a gem actually, it's a type of metal that oxidizes weird. Yeah, there's a science to it, which we won't go into. Let's get into this episode. What happens with this episode is that, well, Steven is trying to hide a shirt that Lion keeps chewing on. And um, he decides to hide it in Lion's mane. Because remember, there's that tree there, and there's those weapons and other items in there. And uh, Steven throws the t-shirt up on the tree. He's standing up there. It's like, this is pretty sturdy. And then he accidentally pops the bubble that's in Lion's mane. And this frees bismuth. Apparently, um, bismuth is a missing crystal gem. Rose Quartz had told the rest of the crystal gems that bismuth had been lost in a battle. Anyhow, that seems suspicious. Bismuth reconnects with Pearl and Garnet, who are overjoyed and thrilled to have their sister back in their lives. And it's great. Oh, by the way, she's voiced by one of the better characters in uh, Orange is the New Black, um, the character of Crazy Eyes in Orange is the New Black, especially in later seasons, is a very sympathetic character and a good voice actor. And she's the main, she's the voice of Bismuth. I forgot the name of the name of the actor that plays that character in uh, Orange is the New Black and plays Bismuth, but eh, a quick trip to IMDb or whatnot can find that information for you. Sorry. I forgot to write it down. But yeah, she does a great job. Anyway, she reconnects with them, and then she talks to him about the early days. She she catches up on what's happened with the battle and what happened to Rose. Um, very confused by Stephen. But yeah, um, then she takes him to go see The Forge. And The Forge is a is Lamar Burton who uh, hangs out. In the, sorry, that's La Forge. And that's a terrible joke. Sorry. Just hang head in shame. Just bad. Ah. But yeah, anyways. She takes him to the forge. And she upgrades Garnet's fists. Pearl's um, spear turns it into a trident. and But Amethyst is feeling a little bit suspicious. Because, you know, nobody told Amethyst about Bismuth. Nobody. Nobody mentioned Bismuth. Bismuth was alive before Amethyst's time. But Bismuth goes ahead and upgrades Amethyst's whip. And it's awesome. They go and there's some pretty good training between it. They're really happy to have another member of the team on there. But Bismuth, you know, has a little bit of an edge. She's got a rather extreme hatred for the home world by quite a bit. And that's understandable because when people find out that they can be more than what society tells them to be and they find out that they've been oppressed not many people are like help help I'm being oppressed oftentimes people tend to harbor that oppression and, and that feel that feeling of helplessness that feeling of being used and they use it for violent means and that's what bismuth has done bismuth has internalized that oppression and turned it into outward hatred and that's really what people need to do and realize is that what people need to realize is that when you internalize hatred and prejudice that's directed towards you, it comes out as violence. You can't do that. You literally have to turn away from that. If you focus too much on things that are negative, you will become a negative person. It is essentially like a computer program, G-I-G-O, or garbage in, garbage out. What you ponder on, what you spend your time doing, creating, become, um, that's what you become. What you set your mind on, what you set your personality on, that is what you become, good or bad. And that's something you need to realize. Bismuth has taken a lot of that, those feelings of anger and sadness and loss and internalize them and this comes out in violence and it comes out 
in her creation. You see, she created a weapon called the Breaking Point. It looks kind of like a... Uh, what the Breaking Point is, is it's a handheld gauntlet with a um, rotor in the back. It's like a it's like a piston powered gem shattering device that fits on your hand. And she shows it to uh, Stephen who's adequately horrified by it. Turns out that she showed it to Rose Quartz and Rose Quartz was like we can't use this weapon. As bad as the homeworld may seem and has been, despite what they've done a mutually assured destruction through this particular weapon would be wrong. It would escalate the war. It's kind of like a Cold War theory, the idea of mutually assured destruction, but except that you've got one side refusing to use a weapon. With mutually assured destruction, everyone has close to the same amount of weapons, and they realize that if we use these, well, there will be nothing left. And we don't want that. Of course, people have to not want that. And Bismuth is at a point where it doesn't matter to her anymore if that's the right thing to do. Mutually assured destruction means you destroy the other person, even at the cost of yourself. And that kind of thinking isn't good. It's destructive. It goes against what Rose Quartz would believe. Rose Quartz was always looking for like the best of people in these items. That's in these in these stories. That's what she's looking for. And Stephen has to kind of keep that legacy. He has to make better choices. So, after showing the breaking point, she fights Steve, and then um, he eventually bubbles her after beating her, and promises to explain to the other Crystal Gems why this had to happen. Because originally, Rose Quartz bubbled Bismuth and then didn't tell anybody, which may have been because Bismuth is apparently very beloved by everyone, and this would have caused a revolt within the ranks. So I understand the strategic purpose why Rose Quartz did what she did, even if it doesn't seem right in retrospect. It was the right tactical decision at the time. And it's kind of sad. But the breaking point is destroyed by Steven before the end of the episode. He kicks it into some lava in the forge. And, uh, pff, really? Really? Okay. Let's be honest here. The breaking point? Okay. You have to assume or guess that the original breaking point device shown to Rose Quartz was also destroyed, which means that there is more than one. I really don't think Bismuth would look at this and be like, oh, you know what? I'm only going to have one of these. No, there are more of these and there are plans for them. And this is now a Chekhov's gun situation. For those wondering, um, Anton Chekhov was a Russian playwright and author who wrote a lot of really beloved Russian plays and such, but he had this theory that you can cut anything superfluous from your plot if you're making a play, a play or a stage play because it's necessity to do so. It's part of good writing to do so. Everything superfluous, if it doesn't serve a purpose, it's gone. Essentially, you have to... I think the quote is... Mm, that's why I have my notes. Remove everything that has no relevance to the story. If you say in the first chapter that there is a rifle hanging on the wall, in the second or third chapter, it absolutely must go off. If it's not going to be fired, it shouldn't be hanging there. Which is what the breaking point is. Uh, seriously, like I said, if one breaking point exists, especially considering Rose Quartz probably destroyed the previous one, then more of them exist. And it's very possible that characters that are still out there who seem a little bit hard-headed would be interesting now that the forge has been reopened if something were to... I don't know. 
I can see a situation where we're not done with the breaking point. We're going to see this again. And we're very likely going to see it, hopefully, in the hands of Jasper. Which means, I think it's time for one of our extra characters to die. We can speculate about what that will be now that we've seen the tool of their demise. We've seen this. So it has to be one of the characters that's connected to Bismuth. So Pearl or Garnet may have to, at some point in this series, die. Which would be unfortunate, especially because uh, um, unless this gets renewed for another season after season five, Cartoon Network does tend to be like, hey, wait a second, wait a second, this hurts the merchandise. That's why we had all that stuff with the on-again, off-again nature of Finn's arm in Adventure Time and a couple of his swords and such. Things get fixed. They change, but they also get fixed. But, I don't know, maybe we'll get something like that. They may introduce more characters. We're going to see a character some, somewhere in the future face the wrath of the breaking point and lose and shatter. Well, if not through this, we'll see definitely a lot of uh, fan art or fan fiction that does that. Yike. But yeah, Jasper's out there, still trying to get at the gems. Jasper could use new weapons. She could use new weapons. Think about a Jasper with two of those breaking points. Think about the danger of that type of character. There would be no redemption for a character to, that does that. I think we need to get in there and give Steven hard choices to make. But yeah, I liked this episode. It was pretty good. It was a longer episode, and they did a good job with it. All the voice actors were great. I wish they'd given Bismuth a song. That would have been nice. But who knows? I don't think this is the last we'll see of this character either. So, who knows? I mean, we saw Centipedal for most of, um, like, mo um, in almost every season. Who knows? Maybe we'll see Bismuth come back. That would be interesting. So, yeah, what'd you think? Let me know in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Make sure you like us and share us. And until the next video comes out, you are now caught up.